Welcome to the Shulamite Podcast, an extension of Shulamite Ministries and Shulamite.com, with weekly interviews and teaching with author and speaker Martha Kilpatrick and hosted by John Enslow. This weekly podcast is a way to stay connected to the ministry. So come experience anointed messages, not giving just another method, but a living impartation. Reigning is the will of God. That's that's just the long and short of it. Reigning is the the will of God. And if you are not submitted to the will of God, there is absolutely no way that you're ruling and reigning or training to rule and reign. There's no way. Because you're you're not head. You're underneath. You're beneath the head. You're, you're not smart enough for no. your own story to be written. No, and I don't want it. I don't want to do that. That's, mm -hmm. you know, yuck. I would trash it. Right. But, and but, we do. And we do all the time. But when I come up underneath the head and he trains me that way, that's, that's reigning is the will of God. Ruling is the will of God. It will always be the will of God, not my will. Not even Christ's will be done. The father, the king. Wow. Wow. I can see in my own history, it's such a personal uh, training. The training is very unique, uh, very designed personally. Today we live in a world of personal trainers, and I happen to have a son who's one. And he designs a unique training for each person. Each person that he trains does not do the same thing because it's completely tailored to their person. And I can see in my history... Um, and I have, when I was young, played sports. And if you have a really good coach, he not only um, helps you increase in the things that, that maybe you're, you're prone to, to be good in, but he knows your weaknesses and he presses the weaknesses. And uh, athletics is really a great place to be trained if, if it's the right situation, I'll say. Not today as it is. Today it's pretty crazy. Uh, but it used to be. It was training people to the values of simple life and living. You had to learn to submit, come under authority. You came under the coach's authority. You didn't decide, like I was a swimmer, you didn't decide what events you did. You were told what events you would do. You submitted to the practices, not that you liked them, but the practices were laid out as they were. And it was a really, it was a training. And tra training is not usually tremendously pleasant, but it is so necessary and so such a gift because you realize that a really, and Christ, as, as our head and the Father, as the perfect Father, knows how to press us, when to release. He is just perfect at the training. And he will do it all because he knows the weaknesses. He knows the stumbling blocks. He knows our willfulness. And he is just fabulous at knowing exactly how to deal with that and conquer us, really. At least I, I, I thank him for conquering me. I have been a willful person my whole life. And um, I praise him that his will is stronger than mine. It's a gift. You speak of submission, Joan, and that is another secret. And it's huge. At the story, of, I looked at the life of Esther. She ruled and reigned. She saved the nation of Jews. Of his, she saved Israel. She reigned with the king who was one of the worst monarchs who ever lived. And, and I remember beginning to speak about Esther uh, to a group, and, and uh, one person said, yeah, but what, because that was a heathen nation, and she was being married to a heathen king. And I said, yeah, what do you, how do you explain that? <laughs> that was the best explanation I could give her was, oh, I have no idea why that's okay. But it was okay with God. And she submitted to what was totally foreign to her culture, her religion, to everything, and to her womanhood. Oh, he had many, many wives. And yet she, because of her submission to her uncle Mordecai, who coached her, don't say that you're a Jew. Then she was put under a eunuch, trained at, to be prepared to go to the king. And in the end, she was there for such a time as this. And, and if she had not been submissive, again, John, you can see if you, if you miss a point of this, you miss the whole thing and others suffer because you're not in your place.
That's brilliant what you told. And so her whole story is a picture of submission to what is against your will. So giving up every right we exercise before God. I have the right to vengeance. I have the right to be comforted now. I have the right to whatever riches I want because I've suffered so. No, no. No rights in this preparation. And I wonder if sometimes he doesn't particularly make it something that's uh, counter to... Oh, I can assure you he does. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> you do. It's a nice thought, though. Not no, to please, know. Please no, come on. No, I just... It's... You know, it, that, that went totally against her grain completely. Joseph, it went against his grain. He was an agrarian shepherd family. And then he goes here to this palace with these worldly, crazy, godless people. It went against his grain. But he ruled and reigned. He had influence and excellence. There's the word, that excellence word. I'm so excited about that thing. I want to get into that. But but regardless, uh, he, he, he particularly throws it. Because if you have to submit to his will, how, how hard is it to submit to his will that you wanted to do anyway? Oh, well, I would have written that out anyway. So I would have, yeah, let's do that. Well, what about the things that you wouldn't have wanted to do? What about, I mean... That's that's when you're really being tried and really being tested in whether you will bow and submit and 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 uh relegate yourself to the will of God. Right? So Esther had maidens who were with her and when she learned that the Jews were under a mandate of murder and that uh the king's uh world could they were free to murder the whole nation of jews she went to her uncle mordecai and and he told her you were here for such a time as this mm -hmm. so she called her maidens in to fast and pray she had not she could not go into the king's presence except uh if he agreed to it or she would be killed that's how cruel he was so she was risking her life to do the will of god but she was there. She was under Mordecai, and she was under the man, the eunuch who trained her how to, how to live before the king. So she approached him, and he held out his scepter. And this makes me cry every time. The scepter was the power of authority. He was extending to her authority, half the kingdom, up mm. to half the kingdom, because she pleased him. She pleased him by being under authority and being in in places where she didn't want to be, but she bowed. And her submission to what most people would not tolerate right. gained her the throne and, the sa and another occasion to save the nation mm -hmm. of Israel. Because she had the mandate to murder them removed, and they lived. It wasn't about famine or anything. It was about the mandate to, to be killed. And she saved a nation god wants us to be so in in the will of god that we're instruments for the nation it's been it struck me recently that the goal of every believer is go into the world and make disciples of all nations teaching them what i've taught you the nations is is the even though we will probably i'll probably never go to any nation but but georgia That's even not so true. Huh? That's not true. <laughs> You've already are done well more than that. <laughs> so it's I, I can't say enough in in defense of God's wonderful plan for us to rule and reign, which really is our aspiration. It's just we have to come, as Joan says, under the big king. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, but we are called to be kings and uh, kings and priests. We are destined for that. And always the way up is down. So God will take you down on many many places in order to elevate you to where you never dreamed you could be. So I don't want to be a spectator. I want to be there in it. And I know now, after fifty years and more of walking with the Lord. 
He is utterly faithful to get me where I need to be. And, and I've told this story, it just comes to mind, so I'll assume that's my leading at the moment. Uh, when I had a brief bout with cancer, uh, I was kneeling by a chair and a friend walked in and she said, oh, Martha, we've got, to, we've got to do something about this. And I said, wait a minute, stop. You don't understand. I don't care if I live or die. I want to be in his will. And whatever he asks me to go through, I will. Don't tell me not to do this. <laughs> don't, don't tell me that we've got to get you healed. I'll be healed. And I was healed, as a matter of fact. And, uh, but, but I was at that point where my passion had finally become for his will more than for my well-being. We hope you've enjoyed the Shulamite podcast. For all the latest from Shulamite Ministries, please visit us at shulamite.com, where you'll find Martha's daily devotions, posts from getalongwithgod.com, and the online library of all of Martha's writings. At shulamite.com, downloading the free Shulamite app is easy, and livingchristianbooks.com is only a click away. Thank you for joining us on this journey to discover a God worth knowing.